Okay, you're able to see now, correct? Wonderful. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Scha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpati Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namustuti Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Namum Vishnupadaya Krishna Prishaya Bhutali Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschata De Shatarini Mukam Karoti Vachalam Angum Langayate Girim Yatkripatamaham Mandi Shri Guru Dinatarinam Paraman and the Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram Guru Vigauri Chandraya Radhikaya Tadalai Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha Vanchakal Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Ekam Shastram Devaki Putra Gita. Eko Deho Devaki Putra Eva. Eko Mantrastas Namani Yani. Karmani Ekam Tasya Devasya Seva. In the Gita Mahatmya. This wonderful verse comes. Yeko Shastram Devaki Putra Gita. Let there be only one scripture. And that is Devaki Putra. Who is Devaki Putra? Krishna. The Bhagavad Gita spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Hari, Lord Shri Krishna. Eko Devo Devaki Putra Eva. And let there be one God. <laughs> one Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that is again... The Supreme Lord, Devaki Patra Eva, Krishna. Eko mantrastasya namani yani. Let there be one mantra. There are so many scriptures, Vedas, Upanishads, Puranas, and this and that. But there is one Maha Mantra, the essence of all the mantras, Sarva Shastra Marma. And that is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And what about the activity? Karma. Karma pi ekam tasya devasya seva. And what is that one activity? It is, um, it is to, to serve that Supreme Lord, that Supreme Personality of Godhead. So I thought to begin with this verse to help us understand the importance of Bhagavad Gita, to help us understand why Bhagavad Gita is so uh, important and crucial in all of our lives. And what is that art and science of doing action, which we will um, talk about uh, in the session today. But before that, uh, anyone remembers what we discussed last time? Anything still in your memory? <laughs> still echoing through? Anything from last time you want to share? 
we discuss the first eight verses of chapter three. We started last time. Anyone remembers anything from there? What we talk about? Who would like to share something from the last session? It's hard to recall, right? <laughs> Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I think we, we said about, uh, we have two types of duty, but that I think that was for the chapter two, I believe, but I made a note of that. Mm. Yeah, we summarized chapter two. That's yeah. Chapter two. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ampada Mataji, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I think we discussed about how to serve Krishna with our senses and what is true renunciation. Yes, what is true renunciation? We discussed that. Yes, Sudhir Prabhu, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, yes, Prabhuji. And we also was talking about Jnana Yoga and Karma Yoga and how Karma Yoga works. And I think you also mentioned about uh, Nishkama Karma Yoga. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. So this whole chapter is, is entitled Karma Yoga. In the first eight or nine verses, we talk about um, the Tyaga. The, you remember the acronym is TREE. The first T stands for Tyaga. Arjuna had this misconception about following Bhagavad Gita or following Krishna's order. And he was confused, He, which many people are confused. We started with this premise that some people think if I get Bhagavad Gita means I have to renounce my family, I have to go to Guru Kshetra and I have to be like Arjuna and start fighting with my wife and <laughs> just kidding. So... So that's not Bhagavad Gita, right? And uh, rather, uh, some people say, I won't touch Bhagavad Gita because I won't, I won't have the picture of, of the Bhagavad Gita in my home. What is, this is all a misconception. So the point is that Bhagavad Gita helps us to understand how we can truly act in this world. What is true renunciation? True renunciation does not mean to go to the forest and just do nothing. We discussed there are so many, many so-called Babas, so-called Gurus. They may give up uh, their so-called wives and children, but they will go to Haridwar and they'll smoke BD cigarette there. What is the use of that so-called renunciation? They'll be attached to tea and coffee there. And they will also be attached to uh, inappropriate things there. That, that is not the renunciation which Krishna is asking us. Krishna is asking us to, to cultivate that inner spirit. Renunciation is not by the dress, but it is how we address. It is how we conduct ourselves in this world. So with that, we will move on to the next verse, which is... Oops, this has to come later. <laughs> Which is text number nine in um, chapter number three. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Very, very important words. So let's start with this wonderful verse, Bhagavad Gita, chapter three, text number nine. Yagyarthat karma no nyatra loko yam karma bandhana tadartham karma konteya mukta sanga samachara. Did someone want to read translation? Yes, Shrikad Mataji. Others can keep their hand raised, I mean the button, and then we'll try to have everyone at least read once. Hare Krishna. Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, work causes bondage in this material world. Therefore, O son of Kunti, perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction. And in that way, you will always remain free from bondage. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mataji. This is very, very important verse. Um, that 
work leads to bondage yes or no how many of you say yes work leads to to bondage most of you say yes um which is true for 99% of the actions and that is a standard opinion mm -hmm. that work will lead to bondage good work will lead to good bondage going to upper planets and bad work will lead to to bad reactions like animal species going to hellish planets etc so now what is the right thing what to do right what is the option we have to be free from this bondage that's arjuna's proposal that's why he was proposing let's just stop work correct na rahega bas na bajegi basri like <laughs> when there is no bamboo how will you make a flute out of it mm -hmm. and what to speak of playing the flute that's kind of you know kick kill the problem from the root cause mm -hmm. so it may sound like a good proposition but it is we discussed that that it is not feasible because everyone has to perform work so now a very nice you know point comes here that if we have to take the cataract out of the eye we don't pluck out the eye we take out the cataract out of the eye mm -hmm. similarly when we have to take out sometimes how many of you have got a thorn ever in your life in your feet or hand or something right a sharp object most most of us have got at some point right what do we use to take it out mm -hmm. we use another sharp object a needle or a thorn or something to take it out right you all agree with that idea hmm? so this is what krishna is teaching us here that we have to use karma to get out of the cycle of karma we have to use activity to get out of the cycle of activity and what is that special activity that is yagyartha karmano nyatra that work which is a sacrifice to lord vishnu is no more a cause of bondage rather it will destroy all the karmic bondage from the past karma as well it's a very important point to understand so it will this remove it firstly it will not cause um any more bondage and secondly it will reduce it will diminish it will cut off all the past bondage as well very very important point so using activity to get free from activity this is this is wonderful shloka and this for it is it is not an easy thing correct if we have to get rid of that let's say thorn can anyone who is who, who does not know how to how to take out the thorn right you do think anyone can can do it no we need a someone expert to help us who has some experience who has done this thing nicely so therefore it is an art and it is a science also it's not just some capricious therefore i put this title inspired from his own his bhakti samrit maharaj the science and art of doing work because we don't have to ju just do work it's like it's like uh, you know in, in management they say don't you know act without planning correct in in any good process in any good um, you no know, management in any good system first what is done careful planning is done correct if we act without uh, planning then we will will it's like you know driving without knowing the destination what is the goal like it's like then we don't have any guidance we don't know where we are going and when we don't know where you're going any, any road will take us there <laughs> so open mentions a few beautiful points in this purport let's let's go through that so this is the art and science of doing doing work okay so one has to act for the satisfaction of lord vishnu some said dhir hari toshana this is the essence of all work and this is the great art of doing work and in the beginning it requires great expert guidance right 
So it requires expert guidance. So under the guidance of a devotee of Lord Krishna, that means the spiritual master, the Diksha Guru, the Shiksha Guru, we have to act carefully. Otherwise, we can cause harm, right? So very, very important. So here Arjuna is acting or will be acting in the, after the end of this Bhagavad Gita under the guidance of Krishna, who is the expert guide here or the expert doctor or is the expert um, director of Arjuna's film. And also nothing should be done performed for uh, nothing should be performed for sense gratification, but everything should be done for the satisfaction of Krishna. This practice will not only save from the reaction of work, but gradually also elevate one to the transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord, which alone can raise one to the kingdom of God, which is a goal of human form of life. So in short, we can dovetail all our propensities, all our activities in the service of Lord whether it is cooking, whether it is studying, whether it is our job or business or dancing. You know, Krishna consciousness is so dynamic, isn't it? It's not just go to the forest and you know, stand on one leg. That is not bhakti. Bhakti is so dynamic, right? Whatever our, our interest, like someone may be interested in singing, Someone may be interested in dancing. Someone may be interested in cooking. Someone may be interested in managing or organizing programs. Someone may be interested in um, playing musical instruments. Someone may be interested in, in reaching out to public. Someone may be interested in, in earning wealth. Someone may be interested in building relationships, strengthening relationships. Someone may be interested in, in you know, talking more with the kids, in developing relationship with the kids, helping them grow. Someone may be interested in teaching. Someone may be interested in so much variety in bhakti. So, in short, whatever we do, yagyartha karma no nyatra, that karma, that actions, which are is an offering to the Supreme Lord, is no not a cause of bondage. Rather, it is Krishna conscious. It will, it will free one from the cycle of birth and death. I want to also share in this regard uh, one very nice verse, which is a little heavy, right? Should, should I say? It's from Bhagavatam, a little heavy. Should I read this? What do you say? Okay. You all are very mature, expert devotees. So that's why you are giving your approval by your thumbs up. So let's read this. Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 23, Text 56. Nehayat karma dharmaya na vairagya kalpate na tirtha pada sevaye jivan api mrito hisa. Yes, uh, Sampada Mataji, you want to read this one? Yes, Prabhuji Hare Krishna. Anyone whose work is not meant to elevate him to religious life, anyone whose religious ritualistic performances do not raise him to renunciation and anyone situated in renunciation that does not lead him to devotional service to the supreme personality of godhead must be considered dead although he, he is breathing Hare krishna Prabhuji, back to you Hare krishna thank you so much little heavy instruction by kapil muni who is an incarnation of the supreme lord the son of karda muni and devahuti it does not matter how many breaths we have because trees live a very long life, right? Some live hundreds of years, some redwood trees in California, they are like 5,000 years or so, very long life. So that activity, which does not elevate us to religious life, bhakti, which does not help to awaken detachment, hmm, and which eventually does not lead to the devotional service that person is, you know, scriptures are saying. It's, that person may be living or breathing, but no better than, a, than other species. Because that person is not fulfilling the goal of human form of life. Human form of life is not just to breathe, right? Because animals also breathe. 
Animals also eat. Human life has a very special and sacred purpose. Therefore, it is very, very rare. So people say, oh, work is worship. How many of you have heard this work is worship? Right? Most of us have heard this. But who are they worshipping? Who is the object of worship? That no one questions. In 99% of the situations, the object of worship is their own senses or the extended senses. Correct? My job, my bigger home, or my family, or my kids, or my parents, or my, or e, I, me, and mine. So where, what is the center of that worship? It is not Krishna. It is not the Supreme Lord. It is me, the center. So in that case, I'm worshipping my own self. <laughs> if the center is not God, I'm not worshipping God. I'm worshipping my own self. I, I think the whole goal of life is to eat, sleep and be merry. And I think that this is what this work is not worship. So, so people may concoct different ideas, different proverbs, different things. But if it is not approved by Bhagavad Gita, which we read ready in Bhagavatam, then it will not take us to the highest destination. Work hard, party harder, right? These are the common <laughs> proverbs these days. Eat, sleep and be merry. What do you care about tomorrow? Why you care for anything higher? Um, this is not the message of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is teaching us how to make our work worship. Work can be made worship. The activity we do can be made a source of pleasure to Krishna. That will be the worship of the Supreme Lord. If the center of that work is Yagyarth Karmano Vishnu, which we are reading in this. Hmm. Yagyartha, for the sake of Yagya, Yagyartha. So Yagyartha means for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu or Krishna, because one of his names is the Yagyapati. Vasudeva Paramakha in the Bhagavatam also it's shared in the first canto. He is the, he is the ultimate benef, um, factor of all the, the Yagyas or beneficiary of all the Yagyas. Yagyas are meant to ultimately please Lord Vishnu. So this this is, so therefore another name of, of Lord Vishnu is Yagyapati or, or Yagyamakha. So and how, what do we need? Expert guidance, as we read in the purport. Expert guidance is required. Okay, so let's keep moving to the next verse. So now the topic is changing. Now you may say, well, it is very, very difficult to do everything for the pleasure of Krishna. There's everything for the pleasure of Krishna, it, it's a little. It's not that everyone can take that path. So let's see what Bhagavad Gita is telling further. Sahayagya Praja Srishtva Puru Vacha Praja Patihi Anena Prasa Vishvidyam Esha Yo Astav Ishtakama Dhuk Yes, Anita Mataji. Hare Krishna. In the beginning of creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods, along with sacrifices for Vishnu, and blessed them by saying, Be thou happy by this yagna sacrifice, because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mataji. So here, the next letter in your acronym comes, that is R. And R is the rungs of yoga ladder. A, a ladder has different steps or rungs. So the point here is that um, the Vedic system is designed for, so anyone and everyone can follow it. It does, if one says, well, I can't do everything for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu, 
then okay then you do this all right so if not the the best follow this if not that okay this 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 so it does not ex, uh, exclude anyone it's all encompassing someone could be in the worst of the situations and we have examples also like mrigari mrigari was a great hunter he was half killing animals and enjoying that their suffering par dukha sukhi taking pleasure in the suffering of others that was mrigari he used to half kill deer rabbits etc and enjoy them suffer and narad muni came and said what are you doing do you know the consequences etc first he was very upset when narad muni came and the, his kind of animals ran away which were he was planning to kill or half kill so then narad muni can for those who don't know the following story hmm, narad muni gave him an advice for those who have not heard this story can you guess what advice narad muni gave for those who don't know the story <laughs> can you want to try narad muni told some some suggestion to him Hmm. What would be an obvious suggestion, right? Yes, Renu. Com- yeah, completely kill the creature. Don't uh, make it suffer like that. Yes, it it is not a conventional advice, right? Conventional advice would be, why are you killing them? Do you know know the the consequences? Why are you killing them? You should worship the supreme lord. Stop killing them, right? But Narad Muni told them to to completely. to to not half kill them rather to reduce their pain why don't you fully kill them that was like out of the box advice isn't it but an expert guidance expert guide knows how to raise the person from their current situation like an expert doctor knows what the patient will follow and what they will not follow so they will give like if someone is smoking 20 cigarettes every day hmm, there are people like that right hmm, 20 cigarettes every day like completely addicted to it and then do you expect that someone will give him a good advice and then next day he'll stop immediately that's not going to happen so what will an expert well wisher say an expert guide say to him or her do i don't you smoke maybe five cigarettes a day and let few weeks pass few days pass and then then maybe two cigarettes a day then maybe two cigarettes a week and then maybe completely stop that sounds feasible plan but if someone if completely says you are fool number 1 and and you are you don't know anything your life is waste that will kind of discourage that person altogether and and nothing positive will come out so scriptures are there to uplift us not to discourage us so the point here is that now karma kanda section is being discussed in the following verses the following seven verses from text number 10 to text number 7 uh, sorry text number 10 to 16 the next seven verses are more about karma kanda karma kanda is different from karma yoga mm. karma yoga Nishkam karma yoga is very close to bhakti yoga, but karma kanda means fruitive activities, right? Anyone would like to give example of fruitive activities? Anyone? Like by doing yoga, probably I'll get that benediction, some kind of like money, or my business will grow faster. Very nice. डिजाइन <laughs> or which are meant to get some fruit <laughs> so so I mean, that's 
if I do this, I want to get this. Business, you give $10 to a shopkeeper and you want to get something back, right? You, we let's say, there are a lot of fruitive activities. 90, more than 95% of our scriptures, and when I talk about scriptures, I'm talking about the Vedas, Puranas, Upanishads, etc., are filled with what? Karmakanda. Hmm? So many, so many script, you know, scriptural injunctions are there, which are filled with, because majority of the people just want that. Correct? And therefore, the Vedvyas G, Vedvyas, the incarnation of the Supreme Lord, was not happy and satisfied after writing all the Vedas, Upanishads, and Puranas. And then his teacher, the same teacher who told Mrigari to fully kill animals, the same teacher now chastised Vyasadev. What have you done? You have made a mess. People are already confused and they'll be further confused by somewhere you are saying this is supreme, somewhere you're saying this is to be done, somewhere you're saying that's to be done. He chastised because his level was different. So an expert guide, expert doctor, expert teacher knows, expert parent knows how to uplift their dependents, their child, their student, their patient based on his or her specific situation. It's not one size fits all. No two children, no, even twins are not same. What to speak of, you know, um, the same kids in a family. No students of a teacher are same. No students in the class are same. No two brothers are same. No, no, any, anyone, no two congregation members are same. So it's a great lesson for all of us to, to firstly take shelter of that expert guidance. And if we are in that position, which most of you are as a parent, as a teacher, you all are in that position, right? So we also should know how to give that expert guidance based on the, expert, the, the specific situations as well. And two, the goal is to gradually uplift that individual, but it has to be done uh, based on the uh, specifics in mind. So that is fruitive work. Now, fruitive work is also defined in two ways or karma kanda. There is like short term karma kanda and long term karma kanda. Short term means presently in this life. Oh, I want a beautiful husband. Oh, I want a beautiful son. Oh, I want a beautiful uh, home. I want a good wealth. This is just talking about this life. Hmm? So maybe five years, maybe 10 years down the line, maybe 20 years, short term. Then there is kind of long term, but not the eternal long term. Long term means after next life. Oh, if you do this activity, you will get Swarga. Oh, if you do this activity, you will get Somarasa. Oh, if you do this activity, you will go to the the, you know, the the Brahma's look or Indra's look. So that's little long term. But from the eternal journey of the soul, is it uh, Shreyas or Prayas? You know, to Shreyas, Prayas? Prayas. Prayas. From the eternal journey of the soul, it is, it is also... Uh, it is Shreyas. How many of you say it's Shreyas? Karma Kanda, whether short term or long term. How many of you, raise your hand if you say Shreyas. How many of you say it's Prayas? Yeah, it's, it's Prayas, right? Arjuna said, Yad Shreyas Yanesh Chitam Bruhitan Me Shreyas means tell me something which will eternally help me. Don't just give me short term solution or maybe you know, um, just after this life, which many people focus on going to Swarga or there's been someone dies, they say Swarga was hogya. No matter how bad that person may be, no matter how much you know, bad things he may or she may have done. They'll never say narkavas ho gaya. <laughs> well, that's another topic. Um, it's fine. We don't want to talk about um, that topic and this. But the point is that even the goal is not uh, swargavasa. 
But why is the Supreme Lord now telling this in this in this section? Because they are majority, there are there are a lot of people, and the example is this class, right? This class is open to everyone. There are hundreds and thousands of people in Tampa, in Jackson, in you know whichever city you are in. But how many of those come for Krishna conscious activities? 0.01% or less, right? Majority of the population is not even interested in karma kanda. Hmm? Karma kanda at least has, you know, some, some kind of higher principle that at least, which, which we will kind of talk about now. So... Let's let's take this topic. The majority of the population is in a mode of completely ignorance or unrestricted enjoyment. There is no picture of uh, someone you no know, higher. There's no picture of worshipping someone. There's no question of taking shelter of anyone. So at least if we can, you know, if those people can take like the next step in the yoga ladder rung, and at least start with the karma kanda, they'll be one step closer to nishkam karma yoga. So let's see the next step. Devan bhavayat tanena te deva bhavayantui paras param bhavayantaha shreya param avapsthaya Yes, Murali Prabhu, you want to read the translation? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. The demigods being pleased by sacrifices will also please you. And thus, by cooperation between men and demigods, uh, prosperity will reign for all. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. So now Krishna is uplifting us or requesting us to at least uplift from that mode of ignorance and understand there are certain uh, devotees in the position of controllers. Not the absolute controllers, but they are Ishwara. Ishwara means controller. They are not Param Ishwara or Param Ishwara. Param Ishwara means supreme controller and that is Krishna. But there are some Ishwaras. We are also Ishwaras, right? But we are very, very insignificant Ishwaras. The desire to be Ishwara is actually the reason we are here. Hmm? How many things we can control? Can I control? Oh, it's very sunny outside. It's 90 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, sorry. I want it to be 70 degrees. Can I change it? No, I can't change it. Hiranyaka Shippu could change it, actually. Narasimha <laughs> Dardashi is coming. Hiranyaka Shippu was so powerful that Indra and Chandra, they were kind of, you know, sweeping his floor. Hmm. Desire to be Ishwara. But no one can be. He didn't become Parameshwara either. But these demigods have more power of controllership. They can change the weather. They can change the rain, rainfall, etc. But ultimately... We know the famous story of Govardhan Puja. Indra also thought that I am the controller, and all these is all these offerings for the Rajavasi, the residents of Vrindavan, are for me. And then Krishna had to come and teach him a lesson. So the demigods are are devotees of the Lord, but they also have this some proprietorship propensity. So therefore, they are in the category of mixed devotees or Mishrit Bhakta not considered in the category of pure devotees. But that's a lot, lot better than, than, um, you know, than not, not being a devotee or being a demoniac person. So here the point is again that we are not independent. We are dependent. We are not the controllers. We are not the bodies. So if we, some of the yagyas are meant, Prabhupada is mentioning here, to satisfy particular demigods. 
Indra Dev, Chandra Dev, Varun Dev, etc. But Lord Vishnu is worshipped in all the yagyas as beneficiary. Very, very important point. He is the yagya pati, the chief persons of all the yagyas. And there's a very nice statement here. Ahara shuddhi sattva shuddhi sattva shuddha udhruva smritihi smriti labdhe sarva granthinam vipra mukshaha by performance of yajna, one's eatables become sanctified. Hmm. And by eating sanctified food, one's existence becomes purified. Ahar shuddhi, sattva shuddhi. By the purification of existence, finer tissues in the memory become sanctified. Sattva shuddhi, dhruva smriti. And when memory is sanctified, one can Think of the path of liberation or uh, smritir labdhi sarva granthir vipramokshaha. And all this will help to gradually uplift to Krishna consciousness. So, this is uh, the point here that Karma Kanda, the goal is not um, to be to stop there. Like if we are using a ladder to, to go to a destination or to uplift. The goal is not to, to stop at, at, at the first rung of the ladder or the second rung of the ladder. But we cannot, most people cannot bypass it. Correct? We, all of you are so blessed and fortunate and great devotees that you must have done a lot and lot of pious um, bhakti in the previous life. Therefore, Krishna says that um, out of thousands and thousands um, those who come to this path, Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudurlabha, understanding that Krishna, the Supreme Lord, the goal is to perform bhakti, they are not ordinary people. They are very, very rare. But here the message is for, for everyone, not just a tiny point one percent of the population who are already practicing. So Bhagavad Gita is not just for ISKCON devotees. Hmm? Bhagavad Gita is for the whole world to help them to come to the stage of pure bhakti based on whatever their situations may be to gradually keep uplifting. Whatever, one could be at the stage of demigod worship, one could be at the stage of completely worshipping one's own self, one could be stage of completely agnostic, one could be completely like a brigaris, completely absorbed in killing others and animals. So unrestricted sense enjoyment to pure bhakti. This is what Bhagavad Gita is, is giving here. So let's move on to the next verse. Ishtan bhogan hivo deva dasyante yagya bhavitaham Pairdattan apradayaibhyo yo bhangte stena eva saha Yes, Lakshay Prabhu, you want to read this one? Yes, Prabhuji. Translation. In charge of the various necessities of life, the demigods being satisfied by the performance of yajna sacrifice will supply all necess necessities to you. But he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to the demigods is in return is certainly a tea. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu, so much for nicely reading. So we learned this point that we are not independent. That means we are dependent. We are dependent on the demigods. And we'll see that how the demigods are dependent on the Supreme Lord. Um, whether it is for the food, it is for the grains, etc. Um, so we can't just say that it is mine or I um, bought it from Publix, so it is my food, right? Or I bought it from whatever grocery store, Whole Food or whatever. So it is my food. But where did it come from? There's a whole cycle. It, it didn't come by chance over there. Uh, so if we do not offer that, then we are thief. Mm. Right, because 
a thief mentality is that they will take something from the other person which does not belong to him or her and they will not acknowledge that right that's that's being thief to take something which does not belong to them and without even acknowledging that without them or without even being grateful um that's being thief so pretty much everything which is given to us is a gift of the supreme lord so prabhupad is making uh very very nice points in this in this purport as well like every verse for one who cannot understand what the personality of god it is the sacrifice to demigods is recommended so in short um uh, for those who have understood that krishna is to bhagwan swayam that he is the chief amongst all the demigods then then separate demigod worship is not recommended very very simple but if someone has attachments to demigods someone has not fully understood this science no one is discouraging them to stop bhakti is not telling to stop things as we i think we discuss multiple times bhakti is telling to add krishna and naturally this stage has to come organically hmm. that if someone is is attached to demigod worship it is fine in the beginning hmm. and gradually one will take association of devotees one will understand one will read bhagavad gita one will read the bhakti on the purports of shri prabhupad one will come to the true understanding at least theoretically and then one will start to follow that and then one will it's not that one is upsetting some people have this question well if i i used to worship this baba and that baba or this devta and that devta before coming to bhakti now you are asking to only worship krishna is one of the frequently asked question will that demigod not be angry upon me hmm? right that was the question which the rajavasis also had will indra not be angry upon us if we don't worship him so the answer is no um because let's say if someone is worshiping hanuman without ram will lord hanuman be happy never ultimately all these demigods are servants of the supreme personality of god and we have seen so many times in the shrimad bhagavatam any page we open any past time we open where do the demigods go to seek help recently we are reading the bali maharaj section where it when vaman uh, before vaman they when when um, when bali maharaj took over the the position of indra where did they all go in the samudra mantar where did they all go in any past time when mother earth was tortured by the demigods where did they all go they all went to vishnu to help to seek for help for their master so if someone is worshiping the master a true servant they are true servants and not um, you know selfish servants they will not be angry rather they will be happy and also there is there are some differences between worshiping the demigods and worshiping the supreme lord worshiping the demigods is like is like um is like an uncle you no know? the the child is crying and the uncle is visiting after a couple of months the uncle may get lot of chocolates for the child but uncle may not even know that this is not good for his teeth the child's teeth so but the child is asking the uncle will give okay you take it but the father or mother may sometimes not give it until they know that this person's you know condition is not good to to receive that the so demigods give what we want provided we pay the price the famous example is hiranyakashipu he did a lot of tapasya and he asked for a lot of bones from lord brahma ravana did a lot of tapasya and asked a lot of bones from lord shiva and these two names come very often in our scriptures brahma shiva and they they are known for giving boons ashutosh brahma ji giving boons but we know that those boons are not eternal hiranyakashipu what was his destination bhasma sur what was his destination and even they told when when 
when Hiranyakashipu asked that I want a boon to be immortal, Brahmani said, well, I'm not immortal. How can I give you the, the boon to be immortal? Yeah. So, whether one is qualified or disqualified, the demigods will give what, if the price is there. If the price is paid, they'll give it. It's like going to a, going to a store and you say, I want rat poison. Hmm? Okay, rat poison is $20. Do you have $20? Yes, I have $20. Okay, given. Hmm? And then, but if on the sum, on the other hand, so this is compared to demigod situation. On the other hand, Krishna may not give that sometimes because he knows Will I use the rat poison for a good cause or, or a bad cause? Hmm? Someone may use rat poison to kill their own self, right? So, so it is certainly not good. So Krishna will not give. Krishna gives what is best for us. Hmm? What we need, not what we want. That's a big difference in giving of demigods and giving of the Supreme Lord. So, the point is that if someone is worshipping the Supreme Lord, uh, one need not, uh, because there are, on a practical level also, there are like millions of, millions of um, 33 crores actually, that's how much, 330 million, that's a lot, <laughs> we don't know any 33 names, what to speak of, um, worshipping 330 million demigods. Is a demigod in charge for the eyebrow? Is a demigod in charge for the digestion? Is a demigod in charge for the, the you know, different, you know, every situation, there's a, every thing, there's a, there's a, there's a person, demigod in charge, water, air, light, sun, uh, etc. Now, the point is, is we discuss the, the story of Rigari. Now, in the scriptures, there is, you know, Thing about meat eating is recommended. The meat eaters are recommended to worship Kali and worship the the ghastly form of material nature before the goddess, and and sacrifice the animal is is recommended. So the point here is that the point here is to to at least have it regulated. If someone is having unregulated meat eating, let's say. Then the point is, okay, you want to eat meat? Then there are certain directions in the scriptures. That means one, you, you have to firstly cut off the animal, you know, which is also in the lower species, not like cow, let's say a goat or etc. So in front of Kali and you have to chant certain mantras, there has to be certain days and certain rituals and processes to make the process so complex that one is discouraged. And one has to chant in the ear of that goat. Okay, in this life, I am cutting you with my hands. In next life, I give you the permission that we will we will turn the tables. You will be at my spot. I'll be at your spot. And you will be cutting me. Then a sensible person will understand what am I doing? What am I I'm offering this? But what am I building for my own self? I am... I'm, I'll be chopped off like this in the next life. So this is not, these codes are not to encourage meat eating, but to gradually discourage meat eating. But it's a step-by-step -step process. For someone who is hardcore into this will not understand. Therefore, we have to all be equipped with this right knowledge and share as per the right situations. Hmm. These are like the different steps. So we have to see who our audience is and what, what step they are. And, and gradually help to, to keep moving forward. Okay. One very nice point here uh, in the, this. If we forget the purpose of human life, and simply take supplies from the agents of the Lord for sense gratification and become more and more entangled in the material existence, which is not the purpose of creation, certainly we become thieves and will be punished by the laws of material nature. 
वट इज द बेस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ यज्ञ संकीर्तन यज्ञ इट कैन बी परफॉर्म बाई एनी वन इन दर्ल्ड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ भक्ति इट्स वेरी सिंपल दिस इज दस ऑफ ऑल दज्ञ ओके विल कीप मूविंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड्स यज्ञाशिष्टाशिन सन्तो मुच्यंते सर्व किल विषय भुंजते ते तव घम पाप ये पचंती आत्म कारणात इट्स समवन लाइक टू रीड दिस वन यस अभिषेक क्या प्रकृति मैं तो जी प्लीज आओ the devotees of the lord are released from all kinds of uh, sins because they eat food which is offered first for sacrifice others who prepare food for personal sins in german verily eat only sin hari so very very nice words this is one of the 50 important verses as well that food must be offered to to the lord as an offering because ultimately it comes from him only other if we don't do so it's thief thief mentality which is sinful mentality so and this is the easiest and and his con is also called kitchen religion because so many devotees come to krishna consciousness through the medium of prasad through the medium of of um, of food and therefore it is an integral typically when we say food prasad you know the the before coming to krishna consciousness or iskon the mentality may be some pieces of dry you know bundi and you know little bit of one laddu or something but here we are talking about the whole lifestyle change we're talking about whatever we eat mm, must be offered so the food in the mode of goodness which is recommended by the scriptures must be offered to the supreme lord and then it becomes free from sins from matter to it, be- it becomes spirit from matter it becomes spirit from uh, material thing it becomes a spiritual thing because it is it is no more matter it is it matter means it will just help the body the matter hmm? if we eat food it will only nourish the the body but if we eat transcendental krishna prasad it will not only nourish the body it will also nourish the spirit soul along with the nourishing the body it will purify our senses it will purify our mind and ego it will purify our impure consciousness so this is the point here that uh, and let's read maybe a few lines from the purport who prepare food for self or sense gratification are not only thieves but also the eaters of the all kinds of sins how can a person be happy if he is both a thief and sinful so it's all linked we have to purify our food ahar shuddhi sattva shuddhi so it food is is the core everyone needs to eat food but what kind of food we should eat is recommended in bhagavad gita so bhagavad gita is, is talks about everything not just action it talks about food it talks about you know principles of life anger um, bhakti how uh, to be good in every aspect it's like a manual of life and in the life manual food has to be an essential ingredient right because everyone needs food <laughs> it's one of the main um, the kind of fuel for the body but prasadam the food offered to krishna becomes a joy for the whole world and we see that in in scorn distribute thousands and millions of food plates uh in now in the corona pandemic situation they are distributing full food or krishna prasadam all over the in the in the country in india and in multiple other countries scorn is distributing uh, you know thousands and thousands and lakhs of prasadam plates every day to not just quench the hunger of the belly but to also quench the hunger of the spirit soul because that's a bigger hunger to feed the spirit soul with with the mercy of the lord otherwise just distributing food some people distribute meat also 
uh, it may it is binding themselves and the, the the recipient the donor and the recipient more in the cycle of karma so just you know doing good therefore action without proper consciousness and planning can be a cause of havoc also it's like executing without planning or executing in ignorance will lead to suffering for both the doer and the recipient right that's what majority of the people um, they do oh raise you know distribute meat distribute eggs etc et and thinking that this is a very charitable act thinking it's a very noble act but rather it is causing more bondage to both isn't it so we have to be very very careful and uh, proper consciousness the art and the science of doing work the art and science of food is shared here um it is very very important and it is simple also so there's a process with, if you want to understand how to offer food to the supreme lord krishna but in the beginning one can put some tulasi leaves on the food we prepare in the right mode of goodness and chant the hari krishna mahaman three times in the beginning and later as one keeps progressing one can uh, from the, the senior devotees try to understand the more detailed process and few mantras so but the point is that we should offer our 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 food to krishna otherwise it is just sin annad bhavati bhutani arjanyad anna sambhava yagyad bhavanti arjanyo yagya karma samudbhavah okay yes avishek pro yes prabhu ji all living bodies subsist on food grains which are produced from red grains grains are produced by performance of yagna sacrifice and yagna is born of prescribed duties hari krishna thank you it's a very nice line in the purport when lord krishna is worshiped the demigods who are different limbs of the lord are also automatically worshiped therefore there is no separate need to worship the demigods i'm just repeating it as it is here for this reason the devotees uh, who are in krishna consciousness offer food to krishna and eat a process which nourishes the body spiritually so the point here is again if we water the roots of the tree then all the parts are watered we cannot Im- individually uh, water 33 to 30 million demigods neither it is recommended like watering is can we water individual leaves right it's not the, the good process it's not the recommended process but when we water the root immediately all the the parts of the tree are naturally watered one more nice point therefore a person in krishna consciousness who eats food offered to krishna can counteract all the reactions from past material infections which are impediments for the progress of self realization in short eating prasad is not an act of just filling the belly it's a very spiritual act it's um it's a and the, um, that's for the mahaprasadam prayers which we sing in his con temples and at homes is very very important it is basically that the, the senses are a network of ignorance but this is krishna uh, so prasad anand dilobhai say anna amrita pav this is very very like a nectar to purify our our um, material entanglements to help us to gain the build finer tissues and make spiritual progress so we'll do 15 and 16 also a little quickly so i was karma brahmo bhavam vidhi brahmakshara samudbhavam tasmat sarvagatam brahma nityam yagya pratishthitam so one wants to read this one Yes, Ravi Prabhu, yeah. Hare Krishna, regulated activities are prescribed in the Vedas. 
and the vedas are directly manifested from the supreme personality of godhead consequently the all pervading transcendence is eternally situated in acts of sacrifice hari bol okay so this is the cycle of sacrifice actually and i have a slide to share um, here so if we combine the the last two verses 14 and 15 so we understand that living beings subsist on food grains let me share this living beings depend on food grains or anna where does the the grains come from the grains come from raining clouds parjanya where do the clouds come from They come from yagya or sacrifice and So sacrifice uh, is is from the prescribed actions lead to sacrifice or they recommend the karma. And uh, where do the prescribed actions come from? They are mentioned in the Vedas or Brahma, not the the Brahma G because. And where do the Vedas come from? Vedas come from the breathing of the Supreme Lord, Krishna or Akshara here mentioned here. so this is the 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 cycle of uh, interdependence so if one follows this and then one will gradually understand and we have already discussed that living beings are uh, what is the index number 13 that the food has to be offered the grains have to be offered up to the supreme lord it's kind of a, the cycle of sacrifice is, is shared here because you're ultimately everyone is dependent on the supreme lord krishna one last verse I'll read here and then we'll take 16 evam pravartitam chakram nanu varta yathe nanu vartyai tihayah अघायोर इंदियार रमो मोगम पार्था सजीवती यस वेदी हरे कृष्णा माय डियर अर्चना वन हु डज नॉट फॉलो इन ह्यूमन लाइफ द साइकल ऑफ सैक्रिफाइस दस एस्टैब्लिश्ड बाय द वेदास सर्टेनली लीड्स अ लाइफ फुल ऑफ सिन living only for the satisfaction of the senses such a person lives in vain hari krishna thank you thank you so much so if we do not follow this process of the cycle of sacrifice then life is futile if we do not follow the path of bhakti then the life is is futile in short so when the devotee kind of shared very nice understanding of this principle then why is karma kanda being encouraged here karma kanda is is said here multiple reasons number 1 because majority of the population cannot follow the direct path so it's the medicine has to be given step by step and the ultimate these are the different rungs it's like step by step we climb the ladder so what will happen you know one starts to follow the the karma kanda process the point is that person will will understand um that there is something higher okay i have to follow the brahmanas okay even if it is to get a son or get a wife or get a get a starting of a business 
you know there are a lot of karma kanda yagyas where at least they will develop some association of devotee mm. the devotee like narad muni even though he told him to told migari to kill animals but by that association that ultimately narad migari became a pure vaishnava so so the priest the association of priests will happen the devotee will talk about and then he will understand well i am asking for a son or i am asking for some wealth but i am observing that the person will become more rational more introspective that uh, oh my neighbor is dying oh my relatives are dying and they didn't take their wealth with them then the person will think that i should maybe you know think of something better where did they go oh are they going somewhere and is the soul what would happen to the body when it is dead so these introspective questions will come and then that person will understand oh there is a next life also oh maybe now then i should think about next life also like everyone plans for future everyone plans uh, to to do something in the future okay for my child's education or for my child's marriage they they you know everyone plans so now they'll plan oh i should plan for my next life also where will be i next life hmm? then they'll say okay is there some process for next life or oh, then the priest will say oh yeah there is a process in next life you can go to the upper planets by doing so and so then they will some people will think of long term karma kanda from short term they'd come to long term karma kanda oh okay you do this yagya you have you get a swarga you do this yagya you be- you go to the upper planets etc and then they will understand well association is increasing so what's happening the dependence the the relationship with the the guru sadhu shastra is is building up more in this whole journey it's like a journey as one is in the first step one is getting prepared for the second step as one is on the second step one is getting prepared like a class 2 student is getting prepared for the third class and why like that a third class goes to the fourth class and like that the grade keeps increasing so they are they are they are building this in the, in the background by good association by being more introspective they understand they'll read oh bhagavatam says that indra is always fickle indra is always you know worried about his throne that means indra is is also dependent on someone then why like even hiranyakashipu was you know came and he made indra as his maid servant so that means there is something even more powerful oh dear brahmana can you please guide me what is that thing where where does indra go when he is in distress oh indra goes through his master lord vishnu lord krishna and then the story is like govardhan puja etc so basically how it started from karma kanda and then ultimately oh if he is the supreme then why don't i start okay that's the goal you have come to the right conclusion okay let's begin the process of of bhakti yoga so this is what bhagavad gita is is teaching us and if one is following that then there is a very nice verse in the shrimad bhagavatam which says um, because we are not here speculating things we are you know very very clear discussing shastra ृत्यूद O king, one who has given up all material duties and has taken full shelter of the lotus feet of Mukunda, who offers shelter to all, is not indebted to the demigods, great sages, ordinary living beings, relatives, friends, mankind, or even one's forefathers who have passed away, since all such classes of living entities are part and parcel of the supreme Lord. one who has surrendered to the lord's service has no need to serve such persons separately hari krishna thank you prabhu ji thank you so much so very very nice words 
that we all have debts to forefathers, other living beings, friends, demigods, sages, etc. But Gato Mukundam Parihritya Karta. One was taken shelter of Krishna, Mukunda, Murari, Keshava, Madhava, Gopala. Then it's like watering the root. We don't even know the names of our forefathers, right? Anyone knows names of all their forefathers? Great grandfather, his father, his father. Maybe we may be knowing two, three generations at max, right? But every one of them had a father, <laughs> correct? So it's impossible and impractical. We don't even have 330 uh, million days or hours. I don't know. I mean, life is so fickle. But it's like the food, you know, that example is given. Then the food, when it, to, when it goes to the belly, all the body parts are nourished. We don't feed the food to the ear, directly in the head, to the feet. There's a nice story in this regard, in Panchatantra. One time all the, the body parts, eyes, nose, ears, teeth, they all said, well, we are working so hard, but this belly is just busy eating. Everything goes here. We'll go on hunger strike. We'll go on um, non-cooperation movement. So we will, the leg said, we will not go to get the food. The hand said, we will not even lift the food to get to the mouth. The teeth said, we will not even chew the food. Let's you know, teach belly a lesson. The eyes said, we will we'll keep the eyes shut. We will not even open, see the food. The ears said, we will not even hear about food. So, so everyone on non-cooperation movement. A day passed. Next day, everyone started to feel weak. The hands don't have energy. The eyes are don't have energy and, and the body is so weak. And then they all had a round table conference. What to do? We are all feeling so weak. And then a great sage came and said, if you water the root, you all will be nourished. Hmm? And then they realized that the belly is like the root. So belly is Krishna is not a selfish person who just keeps everything to himself. He, he ultimately is, he gives everything in return back for his children, right? So, so then they realized their mistake and then they started to feed the belly. And as a result, they all got nourished. The hands got nourished, legs got nourished, the eyes got nourished, the head, everything. That's the point of serving the or watering the roots. So 10 to 16 verse we kind of talk about today, 9 to 16. 10 to 16 talk about the karma kanda section. So the goal is not to get entangled in the karma kanda, but since it's a we are going step by step, it's our duty to understand the topic. Why is it there? For whom it's there? Because our goal is not just to read and understand, but to try to share also Bhagavad Gita with others, our friends, family. And they may be at different levels. All of you are already kind of practicing the path of bhakti yoga. Um, but we need to understand uh, how to give this message in what circumstances and in what audience. Um, but the ultimate goal is to help us to come to the platform of bhakti yoga, nishkam karma yoga, complete shelter of Lord Krishna. But that's not, um, you know, that's, that's, that's not to kind of uh, discourage anyone from no. it's like oh if you can't do this just forget about you know it or, or, or just get away from here that's not Krishna consciousness that's not you know Prabhupada's movement in 12th chapter also this is shared if you can't do this then do that if you can't do this then do that right if a doctor comes and, and, and says the patient your situation is so bad, you know, there is, you You are, you know, maybe in the material world, the situation may be there, but in the internal journey of the soul, there is no such, no one is eternally, you know, sinful. Every sinner had a past, uh, every saint had a past, every sinner has a future. That's what Narad Muni is teaching us through the example of Marigari, being an expert guide. That's the, therefore, to, 
understand the art and the science of work, we need expert guide. We need expert manual, Bhagavad Gita, and expert guide like Krishna, the spiritual master. So I'll pause here and take some thoughts, questions, reflections, any comments, if anyone has, wants to share. Yes. Yeah, please um, unmute some of your hands are raised. I don't know if, if it's from the reading already raised or you want to say something. Yes, Vedi, please tell. Uh, why do we have debt to our forefathers? Why do we have debt to our forefathers? Because they were instrumental in bringing us in this world. If our parents would not have been there, uh, would not have been born, right? And if their parents would not have been there, you know, they made a lot of sacrifices, right? The sacrifice of a mother, who can ever repay the debt? Nine months carrying us in the womb, going through so many difficult situations. The pain of the birth is the most severe pain and the science has said that and so so therefore we have debt to our parents forefathers etc because they have done a lot of sacrifices for us they have spent sleepless nights for us they have spent uh they they go hungry to feed us so we can't um therefore there is debt giving values giving us so many things Okay, thank you. Thank you for your thoughtful question. Anyone else has any other thoughts or questions? In text 40, this is that if we offer I'm so sorry, I'm not able to hear you properly. Do you mind typing in your question in the chat box? Yeah, I'm not able to. Anyone else able to understand? Yeah, sorry, the, there's some network or connection issues. Can you please, uh, Parna Mataji, can you please type in your question? Anyone else wants to share in the meantime? Any question, comment, or thoughts? So, Pooja, I was thinking that uh, one thing I do actually, especially most of the numbers in a day is eating. It's probably three full meal, some snacks here there. So, if we remember Krishna at least five six times this way, that also keeps us remembering him. So, that's a good way to take prasadam, not only offering the prasadam, but also keeps us. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a very good point. Therefore, Prabhupada has given this nice system that before Prashadam, we, we remember. And it's not just an act of eating. It is a spiritual act of honoring Krishna. We don't eat Prashadam. We say we honor Prashadam. We don't enjoy prasadam. We honor prasadam. And it's, it's joyful. It's not like we have to kind of, uh, you know, meditate like a yogi and eat. It's, it's joyful experience. That's what we see in Chaitanya Charita Amrit. But absolutely correct. It's a way to remember Krishna. There is no difference between, between the, the, the remnants of the Lord and the Supreme Lord. So, very nice point. Any other thoughts or comments anyone has? Parvuji, I was just wondering, like, so uh, we we just discussed, like, the starting from Karm Kanda and leading up to the Mukunda, final liberation. But still, there are so many people, they, they spend all the life in just doing the ritualistic uh, uh, Karma Kandi stuff, and they still, you know, like, they don't, move up. So is it a lack of association or lack of guru or guidance? Where do they lack? Everything. Multiple factors are there. Lack of good association is there. For sure. Lack of sincerity on the part of the practitioner is also there. Lack of introspection is also there. And we are also to blame. 
Bhaktino Thakur says, why is there so much, um, so many things, um, why is there dearth of Vaishnavas? Because Vaishnavas are not preaching enough. <laughs> so devotees are also to be blamed for that situation. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada came to share this message. Our goal is not just to keep it to ourselves. Whatever we know, it doesn't mean that, oh, I can't give a Bhagavatam class. That's fine. No one is asking us to give Bhagavatam class. Whatever we have been given, right? Like you just distributed Ramayana yesterday, you were mentioned. That, that's a great you know, act to, to spread bhakti. So sharing books, sharing prasadam, sharing kirtan, uh, whatever we have been given, we should distribute because as you said, many, many people are struggling, suffering, and they are caught up in the wrong association, in the wrong guru, in the wrong environment, just um, life of ignorance, life of improper guidance. Therefore, um, it's kind of a two-way street. We have to do our part, right? We cannot change the whole world, but at least we can, we can if, if not the sun, Prabhupada transform the whole world, thousands and thousands of people, thousands of centers and places. We may, we certainly can't do that, but at least we can be a lamp. A lamp lightens up one's own self and the room around. The sun lightens the whole world. We can't maybe do that, but at least we can lighten up a room or a handful of people. We can be a cause of positive difference in their lives. And then, you know, that will spread um, that will share with others. So it, it's a multitude of factors. Thank you, Parvoji. Thank you, Hare Krishna. One devotee is asking, should we limit the amount of prasadam we take? Uh, <laughs> well, it's a, it's, a specific, it's a general question. For, uh, Yes, Prakriti Mataji, or... Yeah, Parna Mataji, can you type your question? I request you to kindly type in your question. The point is, there is should we limit our prasadam we take? Uh, in, the, in the... There is now, this question is... Can be answered differently and in different ways. And Prabhupada also answered differently in different settings. Very simple. Yeah, please type your question. I'm having a hard time to hear you. Okay. I'll answer. Sabrina Mata Jesus question. So in the beginning, you know, Prabhupada mentioned eat till like a duck. Eat like a duck means fill your belly <laughs> till here. <laughs> so because to develop that higher taste, if someone is totally absorbed in in a reckless life, or unregulated life do whatever and, and, you know, drugs and meat eating, etc. They need to get a positive. They, they can eat a lot of samosas, gulab jamuns and puris and whatever they like. They can eat prasadam. That's much better than eating flesh and or not prasadam. But as one slowly advances, as one understands that it is not to, to enjoy prasad, it is not to we have to serve prasadam. And plus, our bodies are different. If every day one is eating samosas and samosas and samosa, one will become a samosa, right? Uh, so we have to be cognizant of that fact also. That prasadam is transcendental, but my body is not transcendental. So I have to carefully see. Once in a while is okay. But if every day one is eating lot two, five gulab jamuns, then, you know, body will react to it. Um because we are not at that level of completely that body is not spiritual, body is material. So body, we have to be conscious of our um, situations as well, because we have to keep the body fit and healthy uh, uh, for service, not be lazy and uh, diseased. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then 
in the later stages, Prabhupada mentioned that for the as the devotees advanced, um, then now you should alpahari. We should we should be controlling our eating, sleeping. We should six point seventeen. Yukta hara viharasya Bhagavad Gita mentions that we should control our our eating. It's not that I can eat even if it is prasadam. I can eat as many items I want. Um, but for newcomers, we encourage eat whatever you want as much. See, the point is, if someone is distributing, they should distribute with a very big heart. That's the point. Hmm? They should not think, oh, this person should eat less. <laughs> right? This is our Vaishnavism. They, they should distribute as if they should eat like buckets of prasadam. Hmm? That's Prabhupada's mood. But when someone is honoring, they should be cognizant that they should feel that others should get first. And then I'll honor. And I'll honor to the right degree and to the right quantity. It's not that okay, he's offering, so I'll keep eating and eating and eating and forget about um, anything else. Once in a while, it's okay. Devotees also have this gulab jamun party and the competitions and stuff. But it's not like every day. It's like more like spiritual fun. Because one devotee also said that ultimately, you know, in, in devotee, in devotional life, we kind of regulate of quite a few things, our our what we see, what we hear, what we so the whole pressure comes on the belly. So and now that you're also saying to regulate that also, we are not doing that. We'll have fun. Okay, once in a while, okay, eat whatever you want. Therefore, when you go to Mayapur, go to special festivals, okay, eat eat to your heart's content. But we have to uh, be it should not be daily. But in the beginning, okay, to develop that higher taste, you know, maybe it's fine. So there are a lot of factors and in, in, in based on situations, this has to, one has to see for oneself. <laughs> okay, uh, I think that was um, it. So we will... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Um, Okay, so we'll pause here. And uh, for those who are reading along, please read the next 10 verses or so. We'll try to cover them. And I wanted to ask a question next Saturday. Can we do in the morning around uh, 9 a.m. Eastern? Will that be okay for most of you? Instead of evening, like morning 9 a.m.? I don't see like, yes, no, thumbs up, thumbs down. Yes, Prabhuji. Ravi Prabhu, how is does that work for you? Yes, Prabhuji. 9 a.m. Eastern will work. Okay. Okay, so we'll we'll do that um because we have some engagements in the evening. So next Saturday is just a one outlier. Next week or the following week we'll be back to the normal schedule. Okay, so we'll pause here. Shri Bhagavad Gita Upanishad ki jai, Shri Prabhupad ki jai, Samavita Gaur Bhakta Vind ki jai. Jai. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you.